Hello folks and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be uh, processing M101. Um, I took this with the uh, Edge 8 inch HD and I also took it with a uh, Vixen refractor, uh, a much wider field. And that's what we'll be working on. I used a mono camera this time and I took uh, RR, G and B and uh, HA. I did not take uh, any luminance uh, as I usually do and the reason is that uh, I'm no longer uh, doing or have a need to do deconvolution on the luminance channel and then uh, having to add that back because of the new uh, Russell Croman blur exterminator which is a uh, uh, an outstanding uh, tool for adding that deconvolution feature uh, to images. So uh, let's get started, and uh, it's going to be—it'll be a lengthy uh, video because I'm going to be uh, doing the weighted batch processing script uh, with mono, which varies somewhat from uh, the one-shot color camera. And, uh, but before that, we're going to be using blink and subframe selector and um, in order to kind of reduce the, the fallout that I would get from bad images. And I know I have some. Let's face it, uh, uh, most of us can't afford the, uh, the mounts that provide pretty much error-free guiding and uh, tack shark stars. So what we have to do is figure out a way to make an image that we like and, uh, and, and do some maybe extra nights of imaging in order to gather as much data as we need in order to do that. So for we poor folks uh, who have consumer grade uh, mounts and telescopes, uh, the only answer I have is to get more data and to purge the data that I have from uh, the, uh, the stars that have elongated, that guiding failed, and, uh, or maybe it was a moonlit night and the sky background is too bright, and I tried imaging anyway. I may have a few keepers right before the moon rises or maybe after the moon has set, but um, it just involves, for me, taking a lot of images over several nights. and. Um, it's the price I pay, but uh, it's what I got to do. So let's go ahead and get started and head over to PixInsight and uh, see what happens. <laughs> very first thing we're going to do before I actually forget to do it is uh, I'm going to have to close out a couple of windows here that are in my way that you can't see. Uh, we're going to uh, create a cosmetic correction script uh, to be used later when we run the weighted batch processing. So uh, we're going to go to all processes and click on cosmetic correction. The only, the only change that I make is I'm going to select Use Auto Detect, and then I'm going to click on Hot Signal. Now, if you have some cold pixels, some unusually dark pixels in your image that just stand out, then you may want to select Cold Sigma 3 as well. So uh, I'm going to drag this triangle to my desktop and call this. I need to give it a name. You can give it any name you want, but it's going to be easier for me to remember CC for cosmetic correction. And I'm going to tuck this away up here, and I can now close this. So I know I have this for later. <clears throat> if by chance you forget to do this, and you open up the weighted batch processing script, then decide that you need this. Well, it won't allow you to open up any of the processes if the WBPP script is open. So you have to close it back out. 
So that's why the very first thing you should do, if you haven't already set up and saved your process icons, is to create one. So now we have it. Uh, now I want to open up the Blink process so that I can visually review all the images that I took on April 18th and uh, go ahead and delete the what I call eyeball rejects. And the folder at the bottom left is where I'll retrieve my files. I'm already in that folder. I have already looked at this data, um, but I haven't, oh, there's a bad one. Um, I marked that bad in Sequence Generator Pro. It was uh, number frame number 46, and uh, it just puts it at the bottom. But I don't need to open that up. I already know that something happened, probably guiding. Now, we've had some unusual wind, really ridiculous wind, uh, all month. In fact, for the last two months, uh, even the calmest of the winds that we've had have burst up to 15 and 20 miles an hour occasionally. So uh, really been battling that, and I don't remember having that as a problem in the months or uh, in the months past. But uh, at any rate, I know my images are going to be affected by that, even though both of my telescopes that do deep space, both of them have Atlas Pro mounts, and both of them are on steel piers buried in four cubic yards of concrete. I mean, that sound like a lot, but it was a lot when I put it in. And uh, those mounts, uh, those piers aren't moving. So, uh, okay. Now, the next thing I want to do in order to perform, to have uniformity, as I know the sky background values are going to vary from frame to frame, that uh, uh, particularly they're going to be higher sky values uh, when I start out because I'm lower in the horizon and the more... Uh, vertical I'm shooting, the more towards the zenith, my sky background values uh, drop considerably uh, unless the moon's out. So I already know that's going to happen. And so to make them equal, I'm going to perform a stretch that's going to equalize the luminosity throughout all these images. Okay, and I want to increase the size. Uh, and I'm going to play through these by hitting this error, this video, which is going to scrub through them at uh, five tenths of a second. Oop, let's go back and pull that one. Uh, calibrating this, these files will uh, remove that, maybe. It almost always does, but I don't need to have that. Uh, so I'm going to delete this file. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. You can open up, a, create a folder, and, uh, and you can move this. You can call the folder rejected, and then you can click down here, and it will move to the rejected folder. You select the picture. But what I do is I just click down here to remove it from this list. It does not delete the picture. It only deletes it from this run. So it's still on your hard drive. So I'm going to delete it and uh, I'm going to continue to play. I saw another. And when it gets done, it's going to go over again. You'll notice sometimes that there's a big jump. Uh, but because in that case, in this case, there was a meridian flip. And since I did RG uh, and, and blue and then HA, uh, this blue frame was right at the time we had a meridian flip. So you can, if I play this backwards, so right there I had a meridian flip. But uh, often you'll see a jump and you'll wonder, what, wonder why and there's no flip. Uh, the same orientation exists with your image, but it moves forever. 
And that's because in that case, I went uh, and imaged this over two nights and I plate solved, but I use an error of 50 pixels. And it's very possible that I am as much as 50 or more or 100 pixels uh, uh, off between the two nights. So if that's the case, then what will have to happen is that in the weighted batch processing script, if you select auto, auto crop, then it will end up cropping your image. And I'm going to guess, because I saw that big jump, that I'll have a pretty sizable crop. And although I hate to crop out information that I've been working hard to collect, I don't care where it is. Uh, at the same time, I know in order to get a measure of of visual uh, a good visual of this image then I'll probably need to crop into it some so uh, I'll probably be cropping anyway but uh, I hate to do that all right we've been through this we eliminated one really bad jet uh, lights or airplane lights whatever going through the image so now I want to zoom in I want to look at the stars and here's a good place and I want to move through these images pretty quickly and look for the stars that are really bad all right there's a jump so this is meridian flip because this is the blue channel Now that's probably with the blue going from one night to the next. That's okay. I'm going to leave that one. Oop. I want to get rid of that one. I've got, uh, if we kind of zoom in a little more on this one. You'll see what I'm talking about on the smaller stars right here too as well. So we're going to click on this X, and that one's gone. I'm using my arrow down. These aren't real good. These are not real good, too. I'm going to let the subframe selector sort these out relative to the rest of the pictures. Okay, there's some nice stars to look at here. I'm letting a couple of these pass that I... Ooh. Green doesn't look good here. Let me see what's going on. Okay, that's better. Ah, that isn't good. All right, I'm going to delete. Delete. Uh, delete. 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 May not have any green when it's all said and done. Delete. Delete. This is bad also. Yep. Delete. Delete. Click. Let's go over and... Uh... Oh, I know these are bad. Uh, or it's bad. Okay. That was HA we just went through. All right. Let's uh, see what the red have to allow. If I remember, uh, I've had good guiding uh, other than the burst of wind. Uh, with RMS is under say 0.8 it sure doesn't look like it delete uh, some uh, some of this I think is uh, focus problems Ooh, gracious uh, marginal all right we're done so we have blinked through the images so what I'm going to do is um, Select all of them. 
and now I'm going to move these to a April uh, April 18th and what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to create a folder called link and I'm going to put these images in that I should have created my folders before I got started and I wouldn't have done it that way but that's fine okay we're done I'm going to delete those pictures or remove them and shut down blink uh, now I'm going to open up subframe selector as a process by the way, you cannot save Blink as a process, but you can the subframe selector. So I'm going to uh, call this subframe subframe sector, uh, and I'm going to tuck this over here with my other icon. And one of the first things I need to do is add my files. And unlike a one-shot color camera, uh, I'm going to have to uh, pick uh, the reds and then the blues and then the greens HA and uh, look at those independent of the others. Uh, these are the rejections. Uh, I moved uh, the good lights over to this blink folder. So let's um, bring up the blues, which happen to be first. We'll just keep it in order. Now, I need to add some uh, information about this setup. I happen to know that the arc, sec arc second per pixel uh, scale or image scale for this camera, which is the ASI 533MM, and the 625 millimeter Vixen is 1.24. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. I don't know what the camera gain in electrons is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this over a little bit and I'm going to open up one of the images, one of the, uh, let's go to blink and I'll just pick, it'll be a blue image. And I'm going to go to File and Fits Header. And I'm going to go down here to E-Gain, E-Gain, Electronic Gain. Oh, it's down here at the bottom. So I'm, I need to put in 0 0.9 for, I think it's 9.44 or 9.4. I'm just going to put in 0 0.94. And uh, it's kind of closer to 0.95. And I can go ahead and delete. Ah. I make so many mouse issues. So I'm going to put in 0 0.94. And uh, I'm going to uh, leave it at 16 bits. It's not a 16 bit camera, but it does a conversion. Uh, other than that, I need to find an output for it. And so I'm going to go to uh, my root directory and I'm going to call this sub frame selector. And some people put approved. And so now let's. Uh, Go ahead and run this. It'll take a second, so I'm going to. Okay, um, so it defaulted to the last measurement that I used, which was signal to noise ratio, but as you can see, they, uh, the signal dropped. Uh, where I really didn't have a lot of good signal 
uh, at all. So that's not necessarily a good thing. And also, uh, I probably have a lot of stars in this image. I'm curious to see. Um, I've got uh, 160 stars in this image. I have 280. You would think that the images that have the most stars per perhaps have the best signal, but the stars could may not be parabolas. They may be oblong. And so we have an eccentricity issue. So if you click on eccentricity, eccentricity will give you a value greater than zero, but less than one. And the larger the value, the more oblong your stars are going to be. So let's pick, say, this image. And it highlights it. I'm going to click on it. This one should have stars that are, uh, let me stretch this, a little more oblong than I would want to keep. And I think it's pretty easy to, well, I don't know how easy it's going to be able to see. So this image does have uh, an issue uh, in that there are oblong stars. and. So that measure was a good measure. Let's try this one. Uh, and so we'll click on this one, which is number 26. And we'll try stretching that one. They look okay for a while. Then you zoom in. And this is just when your guiding starts to fail you and your stars get a little more oblong and than you want to. It's not as bad as this one, but it's going to be not as good as this one. And let's click on one of these better ones, which is the first one. And let's stretch that one. So let's see how. Okay, now we've got better stars that are closer to zero, like a parabola is supposed to be. So uh, I have an option. I can select to delete these two. Uh, I'll bet the full well half maximum isn't good on these either. So let's click them both and see if uh, full well half maximum. Eh, not too bad. But look what the whole full well is here and here. Uh, so. I know I want to get rid of those, so I can go ahead and output, I can go up here to output the subframes and output this to a, um, well, I will end up outputting the approved, all but these, to the SFS folder that I created and I added there. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to stars and uh, I'm going to use stars as a, a criteria for deleting because these two that had the highest full well half maximum and also failed in eccentricity also have the fewer stars in the image. So I'm going to unselect that one, and I'm going to unselect that one. Uh, this one happened to be one of the best ones, uh, so I surely don't want to select that. Uh, I'm not going to select this one either, but I am. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete uh, if there's fewer than 210 stars. I'm going to click on stars and uh, less than 210, uh, which means I'm going to approve everything else. So I'm going to click on approve. And uh, oh, 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 I did that uh, backwards. Uh, greater than 210. What am I thinking? Okay. 
So that means that these stars here are going to be removed from this run. And that should give me the best signal. And if we go to signal to noise, yeah, these are some of my best signal. And that'll be kept that. These are some of my worst. And I don't know why, but uh, you got at some point in time, uh, make your decision and then uh, evaluate those stars and see how the run looks. This is what we're going to do. And I go through all of this, but more than likely, what I'm going to do when I run the this script, because I found it works pretty well for me, is I'm either going to use stars or I'm going to use full well half maximum. That seems to give me my best image, both in signal, uh, sky value, and uh, overall, it's, it's the best of the choices that I have found. And uh, I've gotten dizzy playing around with these things. So I'm going to go ahead and output this. I've selected output. And uh, one other thing that you can do, um, you can select a region of interest. For example, if you've got a lot of nebula, nebulosity uh, in your image and, uh, and you really want to just work on the stars, or if you're just going to use full well half maximum and stars, then often I think it's bet you're better off just selecting a region with just nothing but stars in it, but a large enough reason, region that uh, you get uh, uh, a good sample, a good sampling. So, uh, and that's done by, um, say, picking a region of interest and uh, uh, dragging, going to an image and dragging that uh, here. So. All right, that being done, let's output this. And when we're done, then it's time to uh, clear these. And let's add some files. And this time we're going to add whatever's next, which will be the green. And we want to change this to measure. We keep everything else the same. And so let's uh, run this. OK. Um, we're back. We still have stars selected. Uh, it uh, Because I have stars that are greater than 210 selected, it already automatically uh, pulled those out. But I'm curious to see what the uh, full well half maximum Yep, they're the highest, uh, and probably eccentricity. Uh, well, they're not the highest, but uh, I know I've got a, a at point eight. I want to get rid of that one too, and I want to get rid of that one too because I know at those values they're oblong, and I'll probably go ahead and get rid of that one too. So. This is what I'm going to output. Let me, uh, let's go to point spread function weight, signal weight, which is the default. And uh, so see here, poor signal down here. And when you have fewer stars, you're going to have poor signal, which is the case here. And then these are the ones with the full well half maximum issues. So it uh, doesn't necessarily mean there's bad signal. It just means I had bad guiding. So. Uh, Maybe a cloud went through or a thin layer of clouds. Let me bring up medium and see what happens. If this goes up, then that's what's happened. There's probably a cloud that went through that gave me a higher. Uh, yeah, that's what's happened. Uh, when you get a higher sky value, then uh, probably what happened is a thin layer of clouds went through. And, uh, but at any rate, we're back to using stars because it hardly ever fails you and full well half maximum because it kind of coincides with what else is going on. So let's go ahead and output this and uh, 
I got to change to output and then go. We're gone. Take a second. And that's done. So now uh, let's uh, clear out this and add the. Re no, we don't have the remaining. We have HA and red yet. So let's get the uh, HA. And let's. Uh, we got to measure these, not output. I forget to change that. At times, causes a problem. Okie doke. Um, <laughs> well, if the criteria uh, that we used in the past were applied, we wouldn't keep a single HA. So um, that's not going to happen. I really don't care about the HA. I'm going to probably save all of them. And the reason is that I'm not getting HA for the stars. I'm really getting HA for the color in the galaxy. But uh, I am, uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do though. I am going to click on stars and uh, I want to keep, I want to get rid of this one uh, because the stars are where the, the red is. Uh, I want to keep these though. Because in this image, there's just not a lot of HA. Or there's not a lot of HA to uh, to mess with. It's not an AA HA rich area like a nebula might be. So I'm going to keep everything but this one, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. I didn't want to change my values because I still have the uh, red to go through. But for HA, I'm going to only remove this one that has no stars. I don't even know how I managed to keep this when I went through the... Uh... Oops. Forgot to turn my phone off. Then I just knocked it off. Okay, output. And so let's apply global. All right, let's clear this out and add what's left is red, and then we'll be ready for the weighted batch processing script. It's gotten to the point where the, the most time I spend in this is in preparing the images uh, to be worked on. It takes no time now with blur exterminator, star exterminator, noise exterminator, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, really, you can zap uh, with the new hyperbolic uh, stretch, uh, generalized hyperbolic stretch. Uh, you can do amazing things quickly. Uh, this is what takes time. Uh, how life has changed for me. All right. Um, so we're going to uh, change this to measure. And nothing else changes. So let's apply to the reds. Okay. Uh, we now have a whole different set of uh, criteria. So uh, we still have some bad stars, uh, stars down here that don't need to be kept. Our images were fewer than uh, 75 stars. So let's see what uh, full well half maximum has to allow. That's no surprise. What escapes me is how those images pass through the blink. So it just shows to go you. So for this uh, scale of 1.24, these are some pretty pretty high uh, full well half maximum values. Um, should be running below uh, in the twos and threes. Uh, that's kind of disappointing on this. But this was the first run of the night. As I remember, the... Uh, the uh, during this time the guiding was spectacular so uh, go figure but uh, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to uh, uh, keep stars that are less than uh, 
go over here to stars. Oh, mm -mm -mm -mm. uh, maybe 250. So uh, stars that uh, we're going to keep that are greater than 250. And so we're going to add a few more. How making this uh, 230? I don't think that changed anything. So I'm gonna go back to 210. Where it was. Okay. Alright, well, I'm not sure that was wise, but that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go ahead and save these files and then we're going to open up the weighted batch processing script and start the run. Okay, clear this out. I'm going to go ahead and clear this out too. And close this out. We're going to go to script, batch processing, weighted batch processing script. It's probably going to bring, out, bring up the last thing I did. It should, because I have it saved. And we're going to reset everything. Uh, let's start loading files. Let's load our lights first. And uh, they're under blink. No, they're under subframe selector. Uh, hang on. Let me make some adjustments. Uh, 18th subframe selector. So we're going to grab our lights. What I want to see is now we have 40 blues, 37 greens, 23 HA, and 29 red. We really got rid of a lot of red. The total uh, time we have is 6 hours and 27 minutes. So uh, we're going to miss having uh, more data in red uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, so I'm not, that's. I only aimed for 25 frames in HA. So anyway, it is what it is. So maybe I need another night. Let's go ahead and load. We'll load our uh, other calibration files now. We have bias to load. And I have 30 of those. 20 is plenty. Uh, more files. We'll go to the darks or whatever comes next. Uh, flats. And so we have flats for both the green channel, the red, the HA, and the blue channel. And I took those the day that I shot this. So they're handy to have <clears throat> because I use permanent setup. Uh, I don't always shoot flats with every setting. Uh, now we need dark. I opened dark already. I don't remember if I did or not. Find out real quick. So we have our bias, our dark, 20, our flats, blue, green, HA, and red. And we have our lights, blue, green, red, HA, and it. All right. So we look like we're in sync with our uh, flats and our dark. Uh, if we click on this and oh, show our calibration diagram, our lights are going to have the dark signal, dark current removed. Uh, the noise from the long exposure and the reason why we cooled to whatever we cooled to. It's going to be divided by the master flat. And the master flat is created by removing the bias signal from the flat frames. So... Uh, and I should have taken uh, flat darks and uh, because the exposure for the bias is one three thousandths of a second, which is the fastest speed this camera has. And uh, the flat is 1.93 uh, seconds. 
So there's a big difference in exposure, and that's the seam I probably should have removed, but I took bias because I was lazy. Um, but if you go to a flat and look at the calibration, you'll see where the flat uh, has the master bias subtracted from it to give you your calibrated flat. That's as it's supposed to be. We don't have a one-shot color camera, so there's nothing to be changed in the color filter array. Our darks match, our dark exposure matches our light exposure, so we don't need to optimize. But let's just say that the only darks I had to use were darks that were more than or less than this exposure time. I could use optimize the master dark, and it would do its best to apply the signal from the master dark, whatever exposure time I happen to have to your lights. Um, so um, I'm going to, while I'm on this page, select the maximum quality with no compromises. So I want it to do possibly the best it can. Over here under lights, I want to make sure I don't have interactive checked because I plan to uh, go to the gym in a few minutes and work out. And uh, I don't want it asking me uh, to uh, respond to an issue it's having. I'd rather it just go ahead and work it out itself and reject uh, images. And I'll figure that out when I get back. Um, let's see what else we want to do. We want to drizzle. So I'm going to, and let me tell you why I'm going to drizzle. So we had some great scene and um, the other night. And I've brought up astronomy tools. And once you bring this up, go to calculators. And one of the calculators that you have will be CCD suitability. And so this is where I'm at right now. And I entered the resolution for my scope. I could have very easily just gone down to the Vixen ED81S. Go at the bottom. They got every telescope I think ever made in the world and this list keeps going all right here's the Vixen here's my telescope and it has a 625 millimeter I didn't use a reducer uh, I mentioned that uh, when we did the sum frame selector that uh, the resolution is 1.24 uh, scale but I am perfectly sampled uh, as long as I have good or poor scene, but if I have good scene and that night I take, have a sky quality meter and I measure before I uh, image and that night I had some of the best scene and don't know quite why, but uh, I was in the uh, 21.19 in that neighborhood. And so if you add good scene to this, then I'm roughly I'm getting towards being undersampled which means my smaller stars are going to look blocky. So I don't like that. So what I'm going to do to, f to combat that is I'm going to drizzle two times and I'm going to apply it to all the groups, not just the blues. So it's now going to drizzle upscale it's going, it slows down processing, but it is what it is, but it gives you better stars. Okay, I'm going to need a place to park this. Uh, so my output, I'm going to save this to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it the – and the reason why is that I'm having issues with my – this hard drive, uh, the way it was formatted. And the file names are so long, it doesn't want to accept it. So what I do is just use the desktop, and then I move that folder back over. It's a computer problem, a Mac thing. And so we have a place for it. And let's double check and make sure we've got everything we need. Um, I'm not going to change uh, anything in the waiting system uh, because I just about done all I know how to do in the subframe selector to make all of my stars usable or all of my images usable. Overlook my nutsy talk. Um, so I'm going to leave everything as it is under calibration. 
we've uh, selected everything. We're going to use the literal value. Oh, cosmetic correction. Remember our script up here. Well, we want to apply that. So I'm going to click on and apply to all groups. Let me stretch this out a little bit. You see where it says cosmetic correction. So uh, hot pixels will be removed from all of these then which is a good thing. And so let's run diagnostic. Everything looks okay. And let's kick this thing in action. I'll be back with you when it's done. And I've had a workout. One of the things I wanted to point out that I forgot is that when you're running the um, the weighted bench processing script, you have the option under lights to uh, select auto crop, and I did. And so the very last thing that's going to happen is that uh, the auto crop is going to uh, perform. However, it may not be the auto crop you would have selected had you done so independent of this. So uh, this is just a reminder to me that when this does finish in a few seconds, that uh, we're going to, uh, I want to make sure that I show you where you can pull up the images that aren't already auto-cropped. Uh, because not always does Pix Insight uh, serve the auto-crop purpose up with uh, all the bells and whistles. So uh, it works 99.9% .9 of the time, but it's not bad to uh, check it yourself. You may have ended up cropping out data that you could have saved. Okay, so we are done, and uh, in the weighted batch processing script, if you select lights, um, under image integration, there's this option to uh, select auto crop or to leave it uh, unchecked, and I always let it do the auto crop, but uh, I'll show you. Let's exit out, of, exit out of this, and let's bring up our weighted batch processing script. Uh, da, 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 da. And so I have choices of using the auto cropped images, or I have choices to use the blue that was not auto cropped. So if you think, and I was watching uh, the the uh, weighted batch processing script uh, the last uh, 15 or 20 minutes and I could tell that some sizable crops were going on so uh, I'm going to just take uh, these well I'm going to open up all my auto crop I want to see how serious of a crop uh, it is and then we'll decide whether we're going to keep it or not or go back and yeah And this all has to do with my two nights and my plate solving. What I should have done to minimize this crop, because I use Sequence Generator Pro, and if you're using uh, other acquisition software, I'm pretty certain you can set the plate solving uh, coordinate criteria to a, a number. And I use 50 pixels as the error if it plate solves within 50 pixels of the uh, RA and DEC center, then I'm happy. But um, it could be as much as 100 pixels off if it's 50 pixels off on one edge and 50 pixels off on the other edge, it could be a total of 100 pixels off. So I might wanna change that when I'm, I'm thinking, when I'm doing more than one night of imaging uh, to change that to say uh, 20 pixels and uh, that would reduce the cropping that's going on a good deal. So let me bring up the uh, screen transfer function. And let's go ahead and make a process out of that and let's stretch this I'm going to unlink the channels for now so see that's a pretty hefty crop that uh, my reds went through 
I'm going to change, uh, I'm going to delete this, I don't need it. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I lost a lot of my, uh, lost my, a lot of my image to that crop. So I'm going to minimize this. And I now have my red. This is my HA. There's the crop for HA. And actually, those two crops look pretty close to the same. Uh, I'm wondering, let's see if, if all four crops look the same, I'm wondering why it was cropped. Uh, and that's a question that I had about the auto crop feature. So I should have kept those up. Uh, HA, my goodness, this crop looks pretty close to the other one. And this is my green. Wiles are low, well, RGB, and then, oh yeah. I believe that autocrop took out more than it needed to, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm going to open up the blue that's not cropped and rejection higher. There we go. Well, I'll tell you what. That's the reason. But I didn't rotate the camera. Hmm. Well, autocrop may have very well done its thing then. So, uh, or did I rotate the camera? Did I change? I can't remember. Uh, that's what I must have. I must have rotated the camera. And if that's the case, I'm surprised my flats worked. And maybe they didn't. We may find out they didn't work. All right. Well, I have my blues. Folks, you're looking at this since I'm looking at this. Uh, the good, bad, and the ugly. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the uh, process image inspection and statistics. And I'm going to take the RGB only and... Let's look at the blue first, and the mean is 1.59 with an exponent of 2. This is higher, so, so far blue is the lowest, and this is higher, so blue will be my reference. I'm now going to go to process, all processes linear fit, and we're going to save this process icon because I'm going to do it every time. There's no process icon, by the way, for uh, uh, the inspection statistics. Uh, so we're going to take the blue channel and put it in here. And we'll open the red first, and we'll fit the luminosity of the blue to the channel levels of the blue to the channel levels of the red. So they are the same. And we're going to do the same thing with the green. So those three channel le levels are the same. Had I not done that, and I link the channels, and then combine these, they would have been probably more green than anything else. Um, I think green was the highest value. So I probably would have had more green, a green cast to it anyway. So um, let's bring up channel combination. And and let's say this is a... I'm going to call this RGB combined. And we'll put this over here. And build our process icons. And then we're going to add our red, our G, and our B. And 
apply globally. Close that. And so here is our starting point. Well, we got some gradient blue, red, and green. I'm going from green on this side and various shades and hues of green to uh, reds and blues over here. So, uh, light pollution and uh, primarily. So, uh, let's do Blur Exterminator first, just like you would do uh, deconvolution on your luminance channel before you did about anything else. I'm going to do Blur Exterminator, which is my new deconvolution uh, tool. And I'm going to, I have it set to 45 and minus 30. Uh, that's pretty radical. You may want to lower, you may want to raise your star halo value to more like zero. Uh, but I don't because I've got some star halos and that's all cloud, thin layer cloud stuff. And I think, and so let's apply that. Okay, it's pretty radical. Pass. Let's go before. It's a terrific trick and after. Is that not? Wow, got some halos though. Probably should have. On my stars, I probably should have uh, adjusted my halo factor, but in the name of just demonstrating my workflow, my new work, my newest of workflows, it changes all the time. Uh, and then there's a new video. Uh, let's uh, make a process icon out of Blur X. If you don't have Blur X, it's not part of Pix Insight. Um, it's purchased at Russell Croman's website. I'll put a link in this video uh, to both Blurex, um, Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, and uh, I have Gradient Exterminator on in Photoshop. I rarely go use Photoshop anymore though. Pix Insights got it all together. Okay, we'll delete that and it's time to kind of even out this background which is loaded with gradient. So I'm going to go to process, all process, dynamic, background extraction, and we're going to make a process icon. I do this with every image because I have gradients, unfortunately, in everything I shoot. And we're going to set reset this. Uh, hmm. Let's see, I'm going to change the tolerance, 2.000 uh, shadows to 6. And this is going to be 0 0.300. I'm going to change the sample generation to 15. And everything else I'm going to leave the same. And I'm going to generate. Uh, down here, I'm going to use division. And then I'll probably apply, apply a, um, I probably will apply subtraction too. So let's get rid of um, some of these that are on top of hopefully data I'll be able to resurrect. So this is to be deleted, deleted, deleted. When in doubt, just make room for your target. Uh, there are plenty of sample points around these gradients. They're well represented. So, uh, okay, I'm going to save this. I've already saved DBE, but I'm just going to save this one so that I can create these same sample points without having to go through this again. And uh, so let's apply it.
and this is my background and there's the green to red to some blues so it's done something has it done everything hopefully uh, yeah, it looks okay it looks a lot better I think everybody would have to agree it does look a lot better okay so we've got DB applied to this I'm going to delete this one I can't I've got to get rid of this first and then uh, I actually gonna keep this as a clone I'm going to minimize this uh, it's before DBE I'm just going to call this RGB plus um, linear fit plus blur X. So that's what's been done so far on that image. And then this is the same thing, but I've added uh, DBE. I'm going to bring this up again. And um, I'm going to, this time, I'm going to replace the target image. I'm not going to see the background I don't need. But I am going to run subtraction and let's go. Oh, yeah, I missed. Uh, yeah, it helped in the corners here. Okay, good. Was needed. All right, so I am going to save this though as DBE 101 for the target, and it won't be part of my save process icons. It's just going to be. Uh, the process icon that applies to the specific engine in in image. Oh, this isn't going well. All right, it's time now to perform a photometric spectrophotometric calibration. So let's do that. But uh, I've done something along the way. And I have lost my plate solving stats, so photometric calibration will not work. Um, as as you look at the bottom bottom part of the data entry, you'll not see R A and DEC. So it somehow or another it was eradicated when I either ran Blur X, and it shouldn't have. It should have kept it and R D B E, uh, but it does occasionally. So. I'm going to have to plate saw. I'm going to go to process, all process, image. Uh, that's under utilities, I believe. Utilities, image, solve, or something like that. Uh, image file, image. What is it called? I'm pretty sure, though, it's in a script uh, or is it under render image analysis so we want image solver there we go okay uh, this is m101 so I want to search for m101 And we got it. It was taken on, it's got the right date. Um, and it's got my right uh, eccentric information. I'm at 82, I'm at minus 82, 139, 3455, okay. Yep, everything's right. Everything's okay. So let's see if we can't play solve it. Taking a while. All right, now, there we go. Uh, at the very bottom, I have the RA and DECA coordinates. They change wherever you are on the, the image, but right here, smack dab in the center, they're 1403.13 for RA and 5420, 
for uh, deck. So next time I plate solve, I'm just going to put those in. Next time I shoot this image, I will pull those numbers and I will put that in as my target plate solve in Sequence Generator Pro. And I'll insist on an error of no less than, say, 20. Um, cancel that call. Uh, 20 uh, pixels. And I'll get closer and have lesser of a crop. That's the plan. Okay, but I'll forget to do it. Let's see, where am I now? All right, we just uh, plates off, so we're going to run photometric color calibration. By the way, you, you can, let's go back to script, so I won't have to hunt this. Image analysis, uh, da, 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 image solver, and let's drag this and save this as a process icon, but I'll tell you something in advance about using this uh, is that if you click on it you're going to get a funky looking something so what you have to do is right click and open in the global context or execute in global context in order to get the info you want so we've got plate solving needed uh, most of the time you're not going to have to fool with that because it'll be done in the weighted batch processing script. So let's now bring up spectrophotometric color calibration. Bingo. And let's uh, pick the camera for that. I'm using the ASI 533, which is listed. Uh, I'm using an astronomic deep sky red. An astronomic deep sky green and an astronomic deep sky blue filter. I need to have, I don't have to, but I'm going to use a region of interest and I'm going to find this just does background neutralization and I want that. So I'm going to use that from a preview, and there we go. So let's run it. All right, uh, bingo. And so we have our image color calibrated, and we can get rid of our preview, and we're good to go. So now we're going to stretch the image. Um, I'm going to change this to. Um, what am I going to change this to? We're not going to stretch it though yet. We're going to add the HA to it. Uh, we're going to change this to RGB. And let's see, did we save this? No, we haven't. And let's create a process icon called SPCC for photometric, spectrophotometric color calibration. And now let's go ahead and stretch this image. So I'm going to bring up, I'm not going to use the generalized uh, hyperbolic stretch. I'm going to go ahead and just use our uh, tried and proven histogram transformation. Um, and uh, I want to do a couple things. I want to create a preview and unstretch the image and make sure that I have RGB selected as right there as my image. And then I'm going to drag the middle slider over to there and we're going to apply. We're going to reset and we're going to do the same thing again. And we're going to apply. We're going to reset. And we're going to do the same thing to about there. Actually, we're going to bring this over to about there. And bring this up to there. I need to increase the size of this. Let me uh, bump up. I can look down on 
Okay. I don't want this line uh, infringing on any of these slopes because I'll be clipping data if I do that. So I've increased the size of this so I can see better is the only reason why. And then I think I'm going to drag this back because the red slope's already started and I'll be clipping. So I'm going to apply this and I'm going to reset. Uh, Bring this over some more. Oh, about to there. Uh, let's go back. All right, let's apply that. And let's bring our view down. So there's our histogram. We actually have green, red, and blue pretty lined up there. Uh, it's not a goal, it just happens that they are. So let's apply this stretch and close this out. And so, oh, Sugar Burger. I didn't mean to stretch it, so let's unstretch it. So we're now unstretched. Or are we? Did I unstretch it? Nope. Did I unstretch it then? Nope. How many times did I do that? It's unstretched now, so we got to go forward. One more. All right. Okay, we're unstretched. So we're back where we started from. Let me bring up this uh, History Explorer. And RGB and see so we're at the image identifier before we did that stretch so I need to go back I'm right here right now I need to go so there's a slight stretch so I need to go back one more okay before the stretch sorry now uh, I want to bring up the script NRGB combination and there is no process icon for this and I'm going to choose as my source image RGB and I'm going to choose from my red channel I'm going to add HA which I took this is my HA so I'm going to add my HA to my RGB and get this NRGB combination hopefully Oh, I'm really messing up. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't think it's going to matter too much. I should have ran DBE on HA and really prepare my HA channel for this, but I didn't. So, um, man. <laughs> All right. This is um, with the HA, without the HA, with, without, with, without. I don't really see a major gradient change. Uh, the background does have a red cast to it. And I could run, and I will, that's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and run DBE on this. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Let's do it and see what happens. I'm going to make a clone. And... Uh, before I start screwing stuff up again and let's try adding DBE uh, this is our sample points and let's do division uh, let's uh, replace the target and we don't need the background it's either going to look uh, and I don't know what we did what have we done oh okay yeah I'll go for that 
marginal if it helped at all, but it didn't hurt and uh, it may have removed the gradient I didn't see or couldn't see with my 79 year old eye. So, yep. All right, uh, so uh, we now have the HA added to this image and it's time to stretch it. So I'm going to change this to uh, RGB, RGB plus HA and I do think it probably would be wise for me to save this. And uh, I also should save this as a project right now. In fact, let's go ahead and we're going to save project. And we're going to call this M101 RGB HA uh, M101. That'll be our project name. And we're going to put that in the root directory for this. And so let's save everything we've done so far. Unable because I'm just having problems with this uh, hard drive. So forget it. I would, but you can save it. And so uh, I hope I don't lose everything I've got on this hard drive. I probably ought to back it all up and. Uh, I just start out with a new hard drive for every year and uh, and I usually fill it up and this one's a 14 terabyte hard drive so I hate to lose it but it's uh, I, I may just need to move stuff off and reformat it and try try uh, whatever okay uh, so we don't have a backup uh, also when you finish with your process icons if you want to use them over and over again just go to process you go down here to process icons and save your process icons. Give them a name and put them in a folder. And each time you add or take away, you can just update your process icons. I do it all the time. I started out with a handful. Now I got, uh, it fills up just about the whole PixInsight real estate. So you got to be careful or you can get carried away. Okay, now uh, we got to stretch this image. So let's go to process, all processes. Now we're going to go down to histogram transformation and we're going to save this. Uh, I may have already done it, we'll delete it if I did. All right, so put that up there somewhere and line it up later. Uh, this is the RGB HA clone, so we need to change this to RGB HA clone and Let's uh, have the sizes down here. So let's uh, reset and move the middle slider, the midtone slider over. I need a real time preview and I need to unstretch this. Uh, so we move the real time over. We, uh, real time, we move the midtone slider over. So let's apply it. We'll do it again. I like to do this incrementally. This comes from my Photoshop days when up, up resing images was done better, served you better if you did these steps incrementally uh, and not in one fell swoop. I really don't know that it does help. It's just uh, carry over from Photoshop. Okay, now I need to zoom in a little more than I am. So. Uh, let's head over here and I can go this blue slope starts right there so I'm going to head about right there and then let's go over here here it is and the red and green and blue they all start about there so let's apply that Let's reset. Uh, let's drop this down just a little bit. Actually, let's go up. And you'll be really able to tell if it's. Uh, we've already clipped some blue.
and we we're okay there. But uh, all right, we're done. So let's uh, close this out. We now have stretched the image. We haven't lost but just a little bit of blue, but there's, looks like there's plenty of blue to spare, but I didn't want to lose any color. Um, so we did. All right, so we have a stretched image. We no longer need the uh, spectral uh, screen transfer function. And uh, I got it here, SFS, that's STF. I don't know what I'm doing, and so we can get rid of that. Let's take our workflow, work in progress over here. All right. Um, at this stage, I am going to, uh, let's see what time it is. I've got to go photograph a soccer game pretty soon. Uh, let's time to, I don't really don't need to remove the stars. Let's bring up Curves Transformation Process, All Process, and Curves Transformation. Let's now build a luminosity mask, and we're going to click on this icon. So we have a luminos luminosity layer, L-U-M. And I am going to stick that over here. Actually, let's put it over here, mask, and uh, keep them separate from our workflow. Um, and I'm going to apply this mask, which is going to allow me to work on just the stars and the galaxy. I don't want to delete it. I'm going to minimize it. And I really want to see my work. So I'm going to go to mask and I'm going to uncheck show work or show mask. I'm going to create a real time preview, which is a non destruct, shows the non destructive changes you can make. And I'm going to put an anchor point there and an anchor point there. And I'm going to kind of drag this down a little bit. Oh, no, no, no. Not ready for this. Let's go ahead and invert this. Sorry. Now, I'm only working on the background. I'm going to drag, drag this down a little bit. A little bit more. And I should have very little effect on the stars and the galaxy, but I can see I have some. So I'm going to kind of bring this up a little bit. And I'm going to apply this curve once. All right, I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to bring up uh, Curves Transformation again, and I need to go ahead and save that. We use this a good bit, which I forgot to do. And we're just going to call this Curves. And I'll move it over in a minute. This time, I want to uh, bring, I want to invert this back so that we're only working really on the uh, mask itself. And I want to take saturation up. Now let's reset it. I want to take saturation up as tad, not a lot. I'm going to affect saturation a little differently. So this this did the stars as as well as this affected the stars as well as the galaxy. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that one time. I'm gonna apply it again two times. That's it. And I'm gonna close this out. And without affecting the background. I'm going to bring up process uh, LRGB combination right here. And I got this from a YouTuber, and his channel is called Entering Into Space. Uh, I saw this, tried it, and it's a good way to do 
saturation that uh, really has an impactful uh, way of rendering the, the colors and I really like it so I'm going to take my loom, my loom layer and I'm going to drop it on the loom channel and I'm going to turn off the RG and the B uh, I'm going to keep this checked which means that I'll always have my uh, astrometric solution that's the RA in the deck and the only thing I'm going to change don't check Prominence noise reduction. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to drop this to about 360. And when you move this slider to the left, you add saturation. If you want to desaturate it some, you move it to the right. So let's saturate it some. Now we're saturating the stars and not the background. Hang on a minute. Let me make sure. Yes, so the stars are protected, and we're, I mean, the stars are being affected, but not the background, so we don't need this. So let's do this one more time. Let's zoom in a little bit, and let's do this one more time. I'm really trying to bring that hydrogen alpha out some more. Also wish I could see more, um, of the arm here but I just didn't get it I just didn't get it so it isn't a real good rendering of M101 so um, it is what it is but this is more to show the workflow than uh, how bad of an image I ended up stack I ended up taking so anyway uh, I'm going to save this LRGB combination and just call this LRGB combine and I'm going to bring curves up put it where it's supposed to be I'm going to bring LRGB combine and put that up where it's supposed to be now it doesn't need saturation now anymore but I often do use this tool which uh, I think it's called saturation. Image saturation. Uh, it isn't that though. I'm so used to using my process icons, I don't hunt these enough. Uh, maybe it's image saturation. Nope. Well, it would be under image transformation, I think. And color saturation. All right. And so let's create, I'm not going to use this, but let's just suppose that we wanted to bring the red out more. Then uh, click on click around here and look at your uh, and look at the image watch this when I click on red and so you see where that uh, crosshair is kind of lining up so if I go over here and about right there make a mark and then I'm going to need to make another mark and another mark actually I'm going to make marks or set points. Uh, I'm going to move this one over to the. So I got blues. I got reds. You need to put one on the corner here. Uh, I've got kind of greens and yellows and red. But if I wanted to work on the red, I could go over here and just drag this up. And the reds really went, I'd actually need to make a game mask for around here uh, or a star mask. And uh, because it really does funky things to the stars. 
but you can do some selective uh, saturation by highlighting areas that you want to uh, to improve or bring out and then uh, set a couple anchor points so you don't um, you need to set two anchor points on each side otherwise if you don't you set one you open this up sometimes it breaks the other one to go down so at any rate we're not using it but it's a great tool to have and I'm sorry I gotta put this back process all processes color saturation and let's make a an icon we're gonna call this saturates and we're going to move this back I'm trying to keep this simple with as few icons here that you might need as possible so uh, do, 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 do. I need to put the histogram transformation in right there Okay, so the last thing that I'm going to do to this image is apply Blur Exterminator. So I'm going to head over to I'm remove the mask, and I'm going to go over to Process, All Processes, not Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator. Heaven forbid. And we're going to, this is again, is another Russell Crumb and brilliant algorithmic processing uh, step that it just knocks it out of the point part so uh, I'm gonna leave it at that and we're going to let it run <laughs> 